Hey guys, welcome back to Rocket Gun, my fellow space tubers. And oh my god, today we are gonna see finally the launch of Falcon Heavy. And this Falcon Heavy has made us wait a lot. A lot means a lot. So many times this has been cancelled. But today is the day, hopefully, that this will fly. And uh, this looks a cooked cooked up a bit right the boosters uh, are looking cooked up a bit because yes they are uh, they have been reused from the previous missions multiple times but this is a very special one and we will get to know about this so welcome all guys how are you i hope you all are doing fine and hi wildflower you didn't miss the stream today yes uh hi uh robert pester uh, just extra careful after oh yes concrete apocalypse I can't forget about it right but that's the part of the plan that's how the starship would work right so uh, okay fine uh, without any further ado let's just get into this and see what this mission is all about so uh, let's have a look at the Falcon Heavy itself first of all so there have been only five launches till now and that is the reason why this is so uh, exciting because this is a rare one and uh, this provide uh, this produces around uh, literally 64 metric tons of thrust and 5 million pounds of thrust at lift off 27 merlin engines are there on this one so it's a falcon have uh, nine but strapped on boosters uh, with the first stage so you can see there are three first stages uh, which will work together to lift the boost uh, this mission up to the its final destination and there is a special thing about this mission which i will tell you uh, soon so the, here are some characteristics i'm not going deep into this we know all about the falcon 9 and falcon heavy right so let's jump into the thing which we need to know so uh, let's have a look at the mission profile so today the it's a uh, Viasat 3 America's mission and uh, not only this satellite is going but um, two more satellites are going they are going to a geosynchronous orbit and uh, this will uh, uh, this is the flight profile for this this is looking a very typical flight profile but uh, you can see one thing which is missing and this is what is unique about this mission you can see after booster separation stay separation happens and but there is no uh, dotted lines uh, in which this booster goes uh, back to this place and land, right? Because there is no booster recovery in this mission. Yes, they are launching the Falcon Heavy in an expendable configuration. So how cool will that be to finally uh, see a Falcon Heavy launch? And uh, I'm telling you because of such rarity, I'm streaming this uh, um, in my on my channel for almost two years now and uh, um, i haven't streamed a falcon heavy launch so i'm super duper excited they are launching it in an expendable configuration and before you ask why is this so well um, the payload constraint the payload is like that uh, it is uh, uh, a bit heavy heavy and they are not going to geosynchronous transfer orbit with this they are going they are aiming for a geosynchronous proper geosynchronous orbit so uh, there's that just a second guys okay uh, so uh, they are aiming for that and you can see in the mission profile this is a almost five hour long mission and it's it's going to uh, deploy vias at three gravitas space gs1 satellite and estran uh, estranias uh, estranisis first micro geo satellite okay uh, so moving on uh, to the satellite itself so this is a satellite which is the uh, via sat 3 satellite and dude this is the satellite to look out for this is the satellite will be pro which will be providing internet at a very very high speed uh, this will pay uh, uh, this weighs around 6400 kilograms and uh, this is going to this is the first of the three satellites which will make up the viasat 3 constellation a wide variety of customers will be using the terabit uh, speed uh, including the uh, government agencies 
individual homes businesses and they will primarily ser- serve north and south america and this is a very 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 sophisticated satellite uh, it almost looks like that in this uh, you know stacked up config but when it is opened up see how cool it looks like this is a st- mesh which it uh, uses and uh, this is mostly a sar antenna you can say kind of uh, which uh, you can see and uh, if i show you the video of its deployment na then uh, it will be amazing to see have a look at it the solar panels just look at the just look at this sheer size of the satellite this is huge like literally huge and that's why this falcon heavy is also lo- launching in expendable configuration okay moving on to the next payload this is the uh Actorus uh, satellite which is uh, a ride, al- ride along this is going to uh, this weighs around 300 kilograms and it is also going to a geostationary st- earth orbit this will provide a data throughput of around 7.5 gbps for the alaska and the surrounding region and uh, main uh, customers will be pacific data port for this and uh, one more satellite which is going is this one which is a cubesat uh, which is uh, gs1 from gs1 gravity space cubesat gs1 this is satellite and uh, this is mainly for space situational awareness more like an orbital guard in the geostationary orbit so that it can map the orbit uh, uh, provide better uh, insights on the um, uh, collisions if any can happen and all those things so this is uh, a cube sat which is going to a geostationary earth start uh, earth geostationary orbit so well uh, this is all about it i'm sorry i have to be very fast uh, on uh, all the pre launch previews but uh, the pale, the webcast is live so i'll switch over to that We are now looking forward to lift off just a few minutes from now. Today we have 3 payloads on the mission. Those are Viasat 3 as the primary payload for our customer Viasat. Viasat 3 is expected to be the world's highest capacity satellite and will be the largest all electric satellite ever to be launched. In addition to Viasat 3, we also have 2 secondary payloads on board the second stage. Those 2 payloads are Astronus's MicroGeo satellite and Gravity's CubeSat Gravity Space 1. both are scheduled to deploy after viasat which will be a few hours after liftoff and as we mentioned during our last attempt for this mission we do need a lot of extra performance to help deliver these satellites to their final destination in a geostationary orbit high above the surface of the earth in order to do this we will not be recovering the side boosters or the center core and instead each will burn the fuel that we typically use for landing Now because we're not recovering Whoa. the boosters or sec- center core. Look at that. There's no need for landing legs which you'll notice on the bottom of your screen there have been removed. We've also removed the grid fins and this is just to save a little bit of mass for some extra performance on the vehicle. Our Merlin vacuum engine today will light 3 times during this mission. The last burn will take place around the T+ 4 hour and 20 minute mark into flight. Deployments will wrap up about 25 minutes after the final burn and that makes our mission duration for today just under 5 hours. At T minus 10 minutes and 48 seconds, systems are currently a go for an on-time liftoff. The vehicle is nearly fully loaded with propellants. The range is green and ready to support. Now, if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. 
Now at T-minus 10 minutes and 30 seconds and counting, let's take a closer look at the Falcon Heavy vehicle. I'm not so hey, sure. Anderson, I am okay. Stephanie Anderson, a production engineering manager here at SpaceX. Falcon Heavy is a two-stage vehicle, just like Falcon 9, but the first stage of Falcon Heavy uses three boosters, whereas Falcon 9 only has one. You can think of Falcon Heavy as essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, which means that it can carry much larger payloads. Each side booster has flown before, one booster having flown twice and the other seven times before. The center core is new, but as Atticus mentioned, we won't be attempting to recover our side boosters or center core on today's mission. Falcon Heavy has 28 engines total. Each one of Falcon Heavy's boosters has nine Merlin 1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines across all three boosters, and you can see that incredible view on your screen. At full power, these 27 engines produce the same thrust as 18 747 airplanes at takeoff. The 27th engine is a Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage and will power the payload to its final targeted orbit. Once, we, once the first and second stage separate, the second stage will propel our payload to its intended orbit. You'll notice some gray paint on the second stage today, and that's just to help absorb some of the yep. heat from the sun to keep our fuel warm during the long flight today. And above the second stage is where our payloads are safely enclosed inside of the fairing, and that's what you're seeing there on your screen. The fairing protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we no longer need this protection, so we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today with our recovery vessel named Doug. And speaking of fairings, today's launch marks the 100th flight of a reflown payload fairing. The Viasat at 3 America's mission also marks the very first Falcon Heavy to launch with flight proven fairing halves. Viasat 3 is the first of three satellites to make up a new global constellation. So here's more about today's mission and payload. All right. Um, so uh, I'm not so sure Wildflower what are you talking about but uh, they are not uh, wasting any time they are directly going to a geostationary or earth orbit always there will be a transfer orbit in between you can't directly go to a geostationary earth orbit right so they will first go to geostationary transfer orbit today and then the Falcon Heavy's uh, second stage itself will propel it to your stationary earth orbit and that is the reason why uh, you see that uh, gray coating over the falcon heavy second stage because uh, that gray coating is nothing but a thermal coating which uh, protects the second stage uh, liquid oxygen and liquid uh, fuel from getting heated up uh, uh, in the sun in the space from the space uh, so here you are you can see that uh, uh, today it's going to stay to geostationary orbit no geostationary transfer orbit unlike in um, other missions so yes and that is the reason why it is going at an expendable configuration and not a recoverable boat so total payload mass is around seven tons for it so yeah a very unique uh, use case for a falcon heavy today so i'm really very excited and look at this via sat satellite this is so huge and so sophisticated and i'm really excited so that hopefully in future you might see my one of my streams from uh, the satellite itself nobody knows right uh, so okay cool to virtually the entire earth one of the features you'll notice is the very large solar arrays these enable us to generate well over 25 plus kilowatts of electrical power on orbit that allows us to generate huge amounts of capacity that is then usable on the ground the enormous capacity of isat 3 isn't worth nearly as much if that capacity is stranded in areas where there's no demand most of the people in the world only live in a very small fraction of the earth yet we still want to be able to connect those people when they move from place to place Viset 3 is designed to move our capacity to where the demand is. Our ability to move that bandwidth around and really service those dense spots, that's what our customers are looking for. It's not just evolving, it's really like a, a revolution making these big leaps in technology. Then that's, that's cool. <laughs>
if you look at the progression from Viasat 1 to Viasat 2 to Viasat 3. Viasat 3 is actually the smallest satellite we've ever built, despite the fact that it's got multiples of capacity. We took things that were twice the size of a human. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Elsa 760 for that 1999. It's 6 a.m. right now here, and dude, it will really help for me uh, for a cup of co coffee. So thank you so much for that. I really, really appreciated man uh, thank you so very much you are the great person okay um can you sign up for the starling where you are right now well uh, starling has some uh, govern governance issues that's what they say uh, com government uh, government compliance issue that's what they say in the website so we don't have a starling here the one web is supposed to happen here but that is going to be really very costly i wanted to have one starling with me because i also wanted to stream those uh, indian launches when uh, uh, they occur like all the people do in us right uh, from the uh, within uh, the launch site itself but there is no internet there no satellite internet also so very difficult although i i won't reveal anything right now but something is going on Thank you so much for tuning in so right now t minus four minutes from the launch everything is looking great and dude the nighttime this, launch falcon we'll heavy 27 mudlane engines that to an expendable config strong back i don't know what else do you expect support, as well as maybe a starship at night booster, lock float complete. as well as routing for fluids and power to the vehicle It's happening finally. Oh god. PY booster lock load complete. We just heard locks loading finished up on the PY booster. Next so, up at around T minus two minutes, locks loading will complete on the second stage. This mission after locks loading finished got scrubbed so many times because of the weather issues. And today we had like 95% go for the launch. Florida Weather you all know, right? Okay, so boosters finish up their locks loading. E minus two minutes, forty seconds remaining. Everything is looking good. Oh my God, this is happening! Looks like quite a nice day down there in Cape Canaveral. Weather is much more cooperative for this attempt today. I know, right? <laughs> Although I wasn't able to stream at that time, this is very unlikely time to stream me because it's like 4:30 a.m. I can uh, wake till 4:30, but at 6 it becomes really difficult. And now you can hear. Now those again, in just about 15 seconds, we will be completing lock loading surfing. on the second stage, which will wrap up the propellant loading phase of our countdown. Okay, all right. T minus two minutes remaining. Second the rain... stage locks load is complete. There you and go. There it is. Falcon Heavy is now fully loaded with 2.8 million pounds of propellant. Coming up next, we should see some white clouds venting from the TE locks line. This is completely normal and part of our closeout process. <laughs> that could be one thing. Following this, the vehicle will enter startup at T minus one minute. This is when the onboard flight computers take control of the countdown. Okay, T minus one minute, 30 seconds remaining. Rain and shortly after green. the vehicle enters the startup phase, our Rain LD, weather is our LD green. or launch director should give the final go for launch. And let's listen in for those call outs. Rocket is green. This is happening. <sighs> those birds. Just don't come into the way of the rocket. That's it. T minus 60 Falcon seconds remaining. There we go. Falcon Heavy has just entered the startup phase. It's in startup. It's happening. My God. Give us a go for the launch, please. Go for launch. There you and with go. confirmation of go for launch from our launch director, Falcon Heavy is ready to go to space at T minus 37 seconds with the Viasat 3 mission.
30 seconds p minus 20 19 18 17 16 15 4 3 2 1 1 ignition engine's full power and, and lift off the viasat 3 oh. go viasat go falcon heavy look at that go the vehicle is pitching down range and when the chamber pressure that is awful is amazing We are 30 seconds into flight under the power of 5 million pounds of thrust. Falcon Look Heavy is headed beauty. to space. Wow. Falcon Heavy. Now we heavy. are throttling down our engines on those side boosters and that's in preparation for Max Q. Power and telemetry nominal. Max Q is the moment can't. of peak mechanical can't. stress. Falcon Heavy is supersonic. Peak mechanical stress on the vehicle, so we do slow down the vehicle to get through this period of high stress. And once we pass the Max Q, we will throttle those engines back up on those side boosters. Max Q. Oh, look at and that. And great call out. We look have passed through Max Q. So we're going to throttle up those engines again on these side boosters. You can follow along the telemetry on your left hand on the bottom left hand of your wow. screen. You can see the speed and the altitude of the vehicle. and some incredible views of Falcon Heavy in flight. Yes. Um uh, Now two minutes into flight, we will reduce the thrust on the two side boosters again and that will be to decrease the forces on the vehicle structure and that's because the vehicle is now lighter as we're burning through the fuel on the vehicle uh, but the thrust will remain constant. Exactly. Exactly. We want the onboard camera views. I want to see wow, those. Wow, that blue. looks amazing on the screen all three boosters. burning bright there this looks phenomenally amazing <laughs> wow falcon heavy is following a nominal trajectory and good call out on trajectory the next up is the booster separation and again we're going to throttle down the side boosters and then the next event coming up in about a minute or just under a minute will be beco that's booster engine cut off that's where we will shut down the engines on the side boosters and then we will separate the side boosters from the center core. And as a reminder, we are not landing our side boosters or center core today due go. to performance Onboards, needed uh, on today's mission. Pico coming up. And you can see on your right hand right screen up. we do have a view of the separation mechanisms from the center core to the side boosters. And wow. The plume is um, looking amazing. Oh, sure. And Pico or booster engine cut off is coming up here in a few And seconds. Have... And back engine chill has started. Okay, it's happening. It's happening. Pico booster engine cut off. And side stage separation confirmed. confirmed. Both side Just boosters and CSS safe. Look at that. Go. Wow. Great views there. We had Beco booster engine cut off and we watched as those side you boosters, can see those boosters and you can see them there on your screen those side wow. boosters falling Vehicle away falling an optimal trajectory falling away from Falcon Just Heavy center core bloom. I have fallen in love with that this is more like awesome a Kerbal Space program That's going to wrap it up for the side boosters today The next event coming up here In about 30 seconds or so is main engine cut off. Wow. That is also called Miko and that will be on the center core followed by Ooh, stage separation and then the startup of Did our second that? stage engine. <laughs> I think that was a startling satellite that was way too fast for a plane. And Bain we have Miko. Stage separation coming up. Stage separation confirmed. Oh, just look at that Earth. And back ignition. 
and back ignition confirmed wow acquisition signal for me that's the sunset for and you guys we got some great views we watched miko as the engines on the center core shut down stage separation and now you can see on your screen that the mvac engine has ignited now we are coming up on fairing separation and fairing there separation you go. <laughs> what else do you want and also we're able to see and hear the call out that h2 is following a nominal trajectory that the fairing halves have separated they are now falling back down to Earth, and we will attempt to recover them using our recovery vessel, Doug. So the second stage is very, uh, is, is kind of powerful. Now what you're looking and at on your screen is a Previously, I view. thought it's not so much uh, uh, accurate. Uh, the most accurate right now is the... Um, this one centaur engine after that the Ariane 5 and then this comes according to me but that is not the case anymore uh, it's able to uh, sustain its pressure and sustain its uh, um, you know fuel for a very long time and that's why it can go to a geostationary uh, orbit directly also and today that is it's going to demonstrate that itself which is amazing emission trajectory your right hand screen is a Although live view after starship comes into place well we will not see reminder, more of falcon heavy but uh, that's how it is also starship let's talk about the starship the launch which happened i i was on my seat in my office and dude that was something just after the launch we got we saw that uh, three of the engines were not working and then it was just tumbling and tumbling and tumbling when it reached some uh, height and did you see that they fired up the, the starship is so 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 freaking huge that they fired up the flight termination system but they but the flight termination system was only able to uh, blow a small hole in the first and the second stage and it did not uh, blow the uh, rocket apart then after some time uh, the mechanical forces were so huge that <laughs> it was able to uh, rip apart the whole starship that was something that was something for sure when it lifted off so slowly i thought and, and it, it tilted a bit it got tilted a bit just after the lift off and it's because some of the engines were not working but as it went uh, to the highest point more of the engines were not uh, not working and then at the highest point it was just tumbling and tumbling it was looking so good and again i don't know what is wrong with this news and media and all that all the news and everything is showcasing that spacex test launch starship is as a unsuccessful one in which a rocket blew up that was intentional man that was supposed to happen i don't know why they showcase it like this but yeah that's how it is yeah it like i was also very uh amazed by first of all when the fts fired and i saw those big big holes and uh, fuel coming out of it and nothing just happened it just fuel coming out of it the flight termination system failed how rarely that happens in a rocket just imagine rocket itself is a thing in which uh, you control that is the rocket itself is known as controlled explosion and there if you add explosion and then also it does not explode Adds off to them. Plus thirty minute mark. We'll come back to bring you live coverage of that second burn in about twenty minutes. So until then, sit back and enjoy the space tunes. Wow. Okay. So Seco one has happened. So they have achieved their parking orbit now. So now they will be. Ooh. Just look at that. Purple glow. Maybe a camera thingy, but. Looks amazing, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll need to wait for 20 minutes or so, and then it will come up. So uh, 
I was wondering if the added to torque from the tumble prevented the release of the stage. No, uh, there uh, actually uh, this Elon Musk did a uh, Twitter space. If you know what it is, right? There's spaces in Twitter. So he did one of those and answered uh, questions uh, publicly. So there in there, he said that uh, the stage separation was not because of the was one of the reason was torque. Yes, but the, the tumbling actually causes the stage to separate more. Okay, uh, it's uh, the torque would tell uh, what would uh, want them to uh, tear apart, right? But this reason re that was one of the reason. But uh, the reason was uh, this that uh, because of the tumbling, the stage separation system was unable to get a hold of the. Um, what should I say? The navigation control system. I mean, it, because it was tumbling, right? So it was supposed to separate at a certain uh, uh, point when the rocket itself is stable. It's going in a straight direction. It was waiting for it to first of all uh, uh, stop its tumble and then stay separate. But that did not happen. So uh, that was one of the things. He uh, explained about the, that concrete kind of thing, right? Uh, crack in the concrete after the launch of the Starship. Uh, he said if they know, if they knew there will be a crack in the concrete, they wouldn't have launched it already. So uh, uh, that was one of the things. Uh, there were many things I uh, don't remember right now. Hard to recall it, but um, that was it. So... He also said he's supposed to have like five more launches this year. I don't know how will he uh, pull that off, but five more Starship launches. He also said that the Raptor uh, production is going to be slowed down because they have too many Raptors now and they don't know what to do with it. Wow, what a problem to have. In a rocket wherein so many Raptors are uh, used and, and uh, he already has so many of them that he does not even know what to do with them and he has slowed down the raptor productions uh what else and uh, yes he said uh, in by next year he's confident that the starship would make it to the orbit this man is out of this world just blowing up rockets straight up to just get the data and go ahead this strategy of spacex always amazes me like how can a company afford to blow up a rocket just to get the data? Just, it's just out of this world. This concept is out of the, this world because this is Starship. This is mostly, this is so costly, right? But this Starship is always like uh, from the birth till now has been all about blowing it up, getting the data making it perfect and then trying again well i think the falcon uh, sorry the spacex itself is that company in which they just they are like okay let's just fly this thing get the data and uh, sh we should not worry about this uh, uh, outcome because failure is the option as elon musk always say failure is always the option that's how you learn right so <laughs> that's how it is um also uh what uh, what else was there let me just recall it there were many things which he shared in that space uh... okay so what is So yes, as I said, the rocket tilt at liftoff was not planned and uh, it caused by the engine out. So that was uh, one thing. FTS did not work properly and uh, took around 49 seconds to work. Wow. <laughs> Starship lost its thrust vectoring, uh, vector control and never reached stage separation. I told you, the tumbling caused that. The stage separation can only happen when the rocket is stable because if you have played Kerbal Space Program and uh, uh, when you don't uh, point your rocket prograde and separate, uh, do the hit that stage separation, then always and always you see something just blew up, right? 
uh, and you don't want that in real life so yeah so uh, he also said that the damage to the environment was minimal no toxic fuel just concrete fragments which were uh, generated and spacex did not expect the concrete to crack otherwise a launch wouldn't have happened so as i said yeah so this is the thing which they did and uh, surprisingly when they lo if they lost thrust vector control which is if they lost steering then also the rocket looped like four times which was was trying to uh, get back onto the track which is still amazing so yeah um so doug says thank you for sharing this along with your educational explanation that help us understand the science involved with these launches your work is strong thank you so much doug i i really appreciate it that you like the like my work and i will surely improve on it so that you all can get more science out of it and you all can understand more okay um exactly <laughs> that force must have been insane uh no a uh, montero they the starship won't be having an escape mechanism uh this uh, regarding this na everyday astronaut has a very good in, uh, video about why starship is not going to have a uh, escape mechanism so first of all if the second stage itself is one of you know uh what should i say escape pod if during the um, fueling of the starship rocket if anything happens the second stage itself can lift off from the first stage and then go to its safe location so that is one of the thing but mm, it itself it does not have any escape uh, uh, route because uh, the second stage itself would be kind of considered for the, that but uh, uh, putting an escape uh, pod in the starship itself would not make a sense because starship payload volume is so huge that uh, uh, having an escape pod for that payload volume um mm, it's just going to add the more complexity and all those things also um one more thing is that uh, we it's supposed to be fully reusable and if you add some escape mechanism to it um that's that is not how you will make your rocket fully reusable right yes elzer that's what i was supposed to, i was saying uh yes fa is going to take a lot longer although fa is under the public pump you know when the starship launch previously was not uh, uh, approved right uh, elon musk uh, it himself uh, uh, <laughs> threw some tantrums on twitter and because of that many people got triggered and uh, started uh, writing under the fa tweets but fa is there for public safety right and there it is their job to ensure that uh, everything is done perfectly before a rocket is launched so i'm sure they will take their time to investigate uh, the rocket launch but that will be a fast pro uh, fast process uh, considering it will be a gov government agency because they will be under public pump yeah so as i said uh, regarding the starship uh, uh, escape uh, mechanism it will it can only happen with the second stage uh, uh, separating in the flight that's it otherwise nah nothing can happen there is no as such flight uh, uh, escape po pod uh, which is there in starship and nothing is planned also so there is that and apart from this 
I am really very excited for the time when actually the starship reaches the orbit and after that it finally goes to the moon also for that dear moon and then finally it lands on the moon how cool will that be that would be just amazing we are right now t plus around t plus 20 minutes or so and uh, we should be getting very close to the SES2 and after this SES2 and the SQL2 happens I will end this stream for now because this stream will go on for like 5 hours 5 hours or so and it's already 6, 6 uh, 16 am here so I can't stay up more today so pardon me for that but yeah we should see that uh, plus 20 minutes also there are like two lines which you can see right uh, the other line which you see is the next orbit which it will take so um, there is that and also you can see the inclination of this orbit is around uh, 45 degrees or so because it depends on uh, uh, like uh, which orbit you are going right so kind of uh, it makes sense to have a 45 degree inclination from the US coast because um, it's kind of makes uh, uh, waste very little fuel and they can correct their orbital inclination once they have a very high uh, what do you say GTO right and they, once they have a high GTO then they can correct any orbital inclination with very less fuel so um, there's that so if you have uh, played Kerbal Space Program, you know what I'm talking about. So if they have a very high apogee, then at the point of apogee, the rocket itself is very, very slow. And any maneuvers at that point of time uh, will give you big results and with very less fuels. So orbital inclination change, if they want to do it, if any, they will do it at GTO. So we don't have any information about uh, what will be the uh, orbital parameters of uh, uh, today's launch so can't say for sure whether they will do any orbital inclination change or not but if they have to do any they will do it at that point of time only uh how do i like ksp2 well i have tried it ksp2 and i was supposed to make some videos about it also but my laptop I was supposed to stream it man <laughs> I was supposed to stream it but the requirements of KSP2 is just out of this world and I played it for the first time in that week I was super duper excited I uh, like um, made some rockets built some planes also um, flew around here and there but the frame rate was killing me and there were so many glitches so many bugs that the one of the biggest uh, reason why i stopped playing after one week was that whenever i was supposed to do a orbital transfer that uh, orbital trajectory was not there on the next uh, celestial body and because of that i couldn't make any tra orbital uh, transfer maneuvers <laughs> so before until and unless that was fixed I couldn't play it anymore so that was the point when I gave up on that game and I know that uh, uh, that thing has been fixed and many new improvements uh, are there but I haven't uh, played it after that because of some things going on in my life but still um, it's a good game graphic improvement is like top notch the music is just so so soothing and it's so surreal and uh, then uh, uh, the mechanics itself is very good so i am super duper excited for this game i just want that game to be a bit more polished and i would love to explore more planets and i'm just waiting for that science mission uh, uh the uh, not the science mission that uh, career mode because I am a player who is very mission oriented 
అంటే అన్లెస్ యూ థ్రో మీ అప్ అ మిషన్ ఐ వుడెంట్ డూ ఇట్ ఆన్ మై ఓన్ సో ఐ ఎమ్ నాట్ ఇన్ టు ద లైక్ బిల్డింగ్ సమ్ క్రాఫ్ట్స్ డూయింగ్ సమ్థింగ్ క్రేజీ అండ్ ఆల్ దోస్ థింగ్స్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ ఇన్ టు దాట్ ఐఎమ్ అ పర్సన్ ఇఫ్ యూ గివ్ మీ మిషన్స్ ఐ విల్ కంప్లీట్ ఇట్ సో ఐఎమ్ ట్రూలీ వెయిటింగ్ ఫర్ ద కరియర్ మిషన్ సో దాట్ మిషన్స్ కమ్ టు మీ అండ్ ఐ స్టార్ట్ కంప్లీటింగ్ కంప్లీటింగ్ అండ్ కంప్లీటింగ్ ఇట్ అండ్ do it so yeah that's how it is also um, i tried rendezvousing uh, in the ksp2 at that point of time that was also a bit glitchy the target was going here and there so i'm not so sure what is the state right now but overall i would give that game still a solid 8 out of 10 still it's not polished but uh, that is love of my heart i was waiting for the ksp2 like for so long and finally it released and i was like oh finally i can play it but then it was disappointment only because of the frame rate but yeah that's how it is yeah this relo- uh, reloaded a game and my ship flew apart this also happens this also happened with me <laughs> so i'm not so sure what is the state of the game right now because i haven't played it for so long now you have said it uh, i feel like playing so tomorrow i might play it I, i might give it another chance i never know but uh, yeah that's how it is so next up coming up we have the ses2 in which we shall be seeing uh, a gto transfer right rocket is getting uh, ready for the startup we can see the rcs uh, doing the thing making it stable and making sure the fuel is uh, what should i say at the bottom of the tank right so it's happening we going to see the uh, s ses2 very soon right now Welcome back to our coverage of the Viasat 3 America's Mission. If you're just joining us, we did have an on-time liftoff at 8.26 p.m. Eastern Time from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A. Due to the performance requirements on this mission, we did not recover the side boosters or the center core, but our second stage is well on its way. 
Coming up next is the second of three total burns that the second stage needs to execute before payload deployment. Now for the ne this next burn, we might lose ground station coverage, partly through the burn. So while we may not be able to confirm Seco 2 or Good Orbit immediately after, our team on console will be able to confirm this when we acquire signal from the next ground station. Now this burn should last just about two minutes and starting any second now. And there you go. We have ignition on the booster and dude, look at that speedometer. <laughs> it's increasing like screen, crazy. As you just start up the second engine for the second burn. The purpose of this burn is to take us from a parking orbit in low earth orbit and extend our apogee or peak of the orbit to an altitude of about 30,000 kilometers. The next burn after this, the third burn, will take the lower side of that orbit, orbit and also extend it out to about 30,000 kilometers. And that will put us in a geostationary orbit. Now what's special about a geostationary orbit is it takes roughly 24 hours for a satellite in this orbit to complete one full orbit around the Earth. Expected loss of signal, goodbye. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it does look like we have lost ground station coverage so once we regain signal at the next ground station, we should hear a call out for Seco 2 and that stage two is in a good orbit. Now, as far as live coverage for our third and final burn, that will occur in a couple of hours from now at the T plus four hour and 22 minute mark. I hope you all stick with us and we will see you then. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this should be it for me. So you can see now the velocity is almost 31 thousand uh, kilometers an hour that was like 75 kilometers per second per second <laughs> yes 75 kilometers per second square is added wow it's huge the acceleration was huge but yeah that's how it is if it has to reach around 36,000 uh, kilometer as the apogee so yeah okay so thank you so much for tuning in guys uh, it was really a treat to be with you again and thank you so much doug for becoming a technician and supporting this channel uh, dude you are great thank you so 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 very much doug uh, really appreciated and uh, i hope you stay uh, for a very long time because you will get some treats out of here so yeah let me see uh, what launch do we have next I know we have the fell uh, this ooh so we have a Chinese launch coming up on 10th of May cool but next launch is the tropics 2 satellite from the rocket lab on 3rd of May so uh, get ready for that and after that we have uh, the, the Chinese launch to Chinese space station hopefully I'll be able to stream that let's see uh, oh and the Axiom space mission 2 is also happening on 18th of May and we what else do we have Ooh, uh, uh, South Korea is also launching its uh, uh, sat rocket the Nuri rocket which was unsuccessful uh, previously but I am very hopeful that they are going to launch this time on 24th of May so uh, this may is actually a very cool um, we might even see a firefly launch happening in may and uh nrol 68 mission happening in may itself and what else uh, yes that's it so may is going to be a huge month for rockets and all so i'm really very excited it's almost 6 30 now so i should go and thank you so much for tuning in guys uh, we will meet again on 3rd of may and till then be happy and uh, just be happy <laughs> stay here uh, and um, 
when i stream next i want you all to be here support me and uh, let's see how the rocket lab uh, uh, electron perform uh, in that mission so until then this is pian shiroila you just saw rocket gun stay safe stay healthy and bye bye